The girl was held down by her mother. Then, she took out the rusty blade. No sterilization or anesthesia. Let the girl cry her heart out, cruelly for her circumcision. Then, she then folded a few spikes scribbled stitches. The girl's name is Wallace, and seven years have passed since she completed the excision ceremony. The harshness of the surgical environment caused her to enter constant pain from the wound. On this night, she told her mother that she was bleeding. Instead, her mother said it was a good thing. It meant you were now a woman, a symbol of your chastity. Her mother's words were her faith. She injured it in silence. But then the nightmare came. Her parents sold her to a 60-year-old man for five camels as his fourth wife. Wallace cried very hard. She did not want to marry this old man. Her mother was not happy about it. But she could not do anything about it. When it was late at night and everyone had gone to sleep, Wallace secretly got up and tried to escape from the place. Her mother just watched her silently and did not stop her. This is as a mother can do the last thing. Wallace embarked on the journey alone. During the day, she traveled through the desert, climbing over rocky slopes. Her feet were bloodied. At night, she simply lay down on the ground and slept. When she was hungry, she picked leaves to feed herself. I don't know how long she walked, but she finally caught a ride to the city. Wallace found her grandmother in town, but she couldn't afford to feed her. So she asked someone to help her find a job as a domestic worker at the Somali embassy in London. Here, Wallace had to work hard every day. And when she wanted to watch TV during her break, she was kicked out by the owner. She had to press against the door to listen to the sound. A few years later, Wallace grew up to be a beautiful girl. She saw on TV that there was a war in her country and the people in the embassy were going back because of it. But Wallace didn't want to go back to that nightmare place and quietly left the embassy and started living on the streets. With no home to go back to, Wallace had to lie down on the side of the road against a door. When she got hungry, she searched for food from the garbage. Luckily, she met Marilyn. When they first met, Wallace haunts Marilyn like a ghost. In order to get rid of her, Marilyn agreed to take Wallace in for one night and then kick her out the next day. But to her surprise, Marilyn woke up the next day to see Wallace cleaning up her house. Everything was new when she offered her coffee. Grateful, Marilyn introduces her to a job as a fast food waitress and gives Wallace her down jacket. On that day, Wallace was working, Mike couldn't take his eyes off of her. When he saw Wallace's generous jawline, Mike was even more fascinated. Wallace sneaks a leftover burger from a customer into her pocket. Mike rushed up to her and handed her a business card and said he was a photographer and that she could contact him if she needed anything. Wallace was about to throw the card in the trash when Mike turned around and said, please don't throw it away right away. She had to put the card in her pocket. Back at home, Marilyn's interview failed again. To comfort his friend, Wallace invites her to go dancing at the bar with him. She stands by, still wrapped in her heavy down jacket, watching the crowd. A turtleneck sweater, a half shirt, a big hardware necklace and a sequin dress were all perfectly worn by this model. Can you believe that not long ago she was a female worker, returning from the bar? Wallace overheard her best friend driving with a man. Afterwards, Wallace blamed Marilyn for being shameless. How can a pure woman do such a thing before marriage? Only a circumcised woman is a good woman, so that she can remain chaste. On her wedding day, she would let her mother open it for her. As every girl does, Marilyn, who are this? was so confused that she didn't even know what circumcision was. Wallace turned around and showed her best friend her sacredly operated body. Marilyn was too frightened to speak. She choked up and finally showed Wallace what a woman looks like when she is normal. In this moment, Wallace's faith crumbled. It turned out that the pain she had suffered was not something every girl had to go through. The next day, with her January sitting on a bench, Wallace showed Marilyn the card. Marilyn exclaimed that both the famous photographer Donaldson could be called. But Wallace did not care. Suddenly Wallace had a pain in his lower abdomen and was taken to the hospital, where the male doctor was shocked to see the wound. He told Wallace that the wound could not be restored to its original state, but at least it would no longer hurt. In order to make Wallace understand what she meant, the doctor found his assistant, who was also a Omanglian. But the assistant translated the doctor's words backwards. She should be ashamed to let white people see her body. And if you change the way you look, you are betraying your parents and your people. Wallace gave up on the operation. She went out into the street, looked at the women in black veils in the windows, and remembered her grandmother's words. All this suffering must be for something worthwhile. She had spent her life escaping to break free from these backward shackles. And now she could not give up her goal because of the words of a stranger. Wallace turned around and went back to the hospital 
to complete the first step in the salvation of her body and soul. After the surgery, Wallace found Donaldson's studio according to the address on her business card. For the first time, she was blinded by the lights. Donaldson began to talk to her about her hometown, her father and siblings. Wallace, who was in her element, managed to get the attention of her agent. The agent asked her to wear high heels for the catwalk, but she had never worn high heels before and fell down after two steps. After her agent complained, she arranged for Wallace to audition. The models here were all very beautiful, and after watching the girls enter one by one, she was the only one left waiting. Just when she thought she was going to be eliminated, the staff called her in. Wallace's outfit kept changing and the flashing lights kept flashing. She was confident, generous and beautiful, and the photographers were very impressed with this model. Wallace got the approval of her agent to take her to a fashion show abroad. Wallace was overjoyed to hear this. Her life was finally starting to change for the better. After handing over her passport, Wallace bought Marilyn a designer watch and told her best friend the good news and asked her to give her a walk. That day, the agent came to her in a fury. It turned out that Alicia's visa had expired for six years and she was furious and wanted to fire her on the spot. At that moment, the landlord's mother said she could ask someone to get a fake visa. The agent brought a group of models to the airport and prepared to leave the country. However, Alicia's passport was found to be different and she was put in detention. What was a beautiful high life turned into a bubble. She kept shedding tears and felt that her life was too painful. She was disliked by her agent's buttocks, so she seriously shaped up to lose weight and would not wear high heels to walk the catwalk. So she went home to practice in the hallway until later Wallace took off her black veil and replaced it with a white one going to the world stage to become a supermodel. Not long ago, the agent who got Wallace out of jail did so because he saw Wallace's potential and decided she was a model and a tool for her to make money. But as they stand today, if she doesn't get a green card, Wallace is being paid to go back to Somalia. So she accepts Neil's contract marriage. A year of living as a pretend couple passed quickly. Wallace, who had received her permanent residence permit, took off her wedding ring on the spot and returned it to Neil with a solemn apology. Wallace's career became more and more successful and she became a famous model. The staff gave her a different look. She walked onto the stage proudly and calmly. No longer the former shepherdess, but the reborn Wallace. She put her beauty and confidence in front of the world. After her rise to fame, Wallace returned to Europe with the BBC, the team for a documentary. In an interview with the magazine, Wallace did not tell her inspiring story but told the reporter about her circumcision experience. The journalist couldn't stop sobbing for a long time after hearing the story. The magazine published Wallace's story. People all over the world watched this girl. At the United Nations headquarters, hundreds of journalists were waiting for Wallace, who was about to speak on stage with their cameras in the air. Finally, Wallace was slow to come out. She was afraid she would be discriminated against. After some self-encouragement, she stood in front of the crowd and lay bare this ad, custom to the world. Wallace was the first woman who dared to speak out and speak against circumcision. As a child, she was lucky to survive, but her sister and sister died as a result. In Africa, the female lower body was considered unclean, so it was excised and sewn. As a proof of treasured virtue, uncircumcised girls are expelled from the village. The film was based on true events. In 1997, Wallace was appointed as a special ambassador for the United Nations. This evil practice still exists not only in Africa and Asia, but in all parts of the world. This cruel tradition, although explicitly banned in many countries since then, still affects 150 million women worldwide. We cannot help but admire Wallace's courage, which not only changed her fate, but also saved countless women.